Good morning. Right now it is 1015. And if you are tuning into this Facebook stream, smash the share. If you're going back and listening to this on Apple Podcasts or you're listening to this on Spotify, however you get your information and podcast, whatever. Uh, thank you for taking the time to tune in. Send me a text, 346-704-1806. Uh, we're going to kick it on the FM, and we're going to have some fun this morning. Here we go. Good morning. This is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. This is Kickstart. My name's Gardy. That's Jennifer Rose Garcia. The song's called In Your Presence, and I happen to be married to her, too. So shout out to Jennifer for writing a beautiful song as she is at home with our, our children, taking care of them. And my newborn baby, Luca. Our newborn baby, Luca. So, uh, good good morning. I have a, a guest in studio. He's not really a guest because he's been on KHEA a lot of times before. But I have Pastor Joshua Rudolph. What's up, Josh? What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing really good this morning. Things are are, are moving along. There's a crisp feel in the air. Do you feel right? it? Yeah. People are people are excited. Getting yeah. ready to get back to something normal, maybe. Yeah. And, and I think that tomorrow... Have you been... First of all, have you been following everything that's going on or like slightly following? I do. I follow, yeah, as, as much as I can. Do you get your information from television, internet? I mean, I'll read the news. So I'll, I'll read like, you know, USA Today, see what's going on. But then there's a couple internet sources, like individuals that I'll get my ah, like main information from. Yeah, the trustworthy friends. That's it. Yeah, you got like probably at least one or two or three and you count, they have to filter the news, and then I get it through them. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. then they're going to give their take. Because uh, at the end of the day, I don't think I trust anybody. I don't. I don't trust. I don't trust the the authorities in it, and I sure don't trust like Karen on the you know on <laughs> Facebook that's telling me what's going on. So I got to kind of filter everybody through. Yeah. So. I have friends that are one side of the spectrum, and then I have friends that are on the other side, and so I'm reading them like that makes sense. Right. Exactly. Read the other one. Well, that makes sense, too. No, I'm trying to find a middle ground in there somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. So I think tomorrow things are going to be opening, you know, uh, in, a, in a way. But um, a lot of people are saying it's too soon. Some people are saying, it's, you know, it's not soon enough. We should have never closed. Uh, but I think restaurants are going to be 25% capacity. Right. Have you been able to, like, order? Are you been doing, like, curbside? What's life look like for you? I mean, we hadn't. It hadn't changed for us at all because we've got, you know, we've got twin boys that are three years old now. I got a five-year-old daughter. So I hadn't been inside of a restaurant in three years, you know, <laughs> like yeah. outside of me and my wife going like on a Friday night, we don't, I don't go to restaurants. So we do everything takeout anyway. So it's been DoorDash, uh, Postmates, Uber Eats. Like it's, it's been just a parade at our house. Uh -huh. What about cooking? Uh, we've been cooking some, not as much as we probably should have. Uh, but yeah, we definitely, I feel like I've spent twice as much money on groceries mm -hmm. the last, you know, six weeks than I ever have before. So I've gained like I have to, I haven't stepped on a scale, but I know I've probably gained like twenty pounds in the past two months. <laughs> I think I have too, so it's not good. Yeah, it's it is what it is. It's what it is. So there's a an event taking place at Abundant Life, which is where KTA Radio broadcasts out of, and I think it's taking place on Thursdays for the next several, right? Four or five weeks, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, we did a a partnership with the Galveston County Food Bank. Uh, we have a really big piece of property. How big is it here? Uh, we I think we sit on eighty acres. Um, total, I think it's I think it's forty on this side, maybe ninety, forty mm -hmm. on this side, and fifty on the other. So yeah, we have a we got a large piece of property. Yeah, so the food bank is out here, and we also have the birthday joy program out here. If you're not familiar with the birthday joy program, what they do is have birthday parties for kids who are not a, not able to to have them. A lot of the times, the kids live in in uh, group homes or in, in some kind of foster care, right? So what they do is they go in and say, hey, you got a birthday this month. Let's throw a birthday party for all the kids. It's a really cool thing. So cool. Yeah. And I, I think about, you know, my birthdays growing up and my kids' birthdays. And, and man, it just breaks my heart to think of some of these kids that just, they don't have that or that's right. not normal to them. So it's a really cool thing that they do. Yeah, no, that's super cool. Yeah. And then, uh, but what they're doing right now, so with the, the, food, the food bank partnership, the, there's cars that are lined up. So they're asking them some questions, how many people live there so they can give them enough stuff. And so they're saying like, okay, do you have a, a child 18 and under? With a birthday before June thirtieth, you know their age. Is it a boy or girl? And then they have a box appropriate for them. That's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So that's a definitely a uh, an organization. If you if that sounds like something you wouldn't get to be a part of, uh, check them out. The Birthday Joy Program. Uh, they're out here this this Thursday, and I think that's going on till twelve o'clock. Yeah, right now it's ten twenty. Uh, this is KHEA Radio dot com ninety nine point five FM. Um. I'm talking to, to Josh Rudolph, and I'm trying to read some of these 
Facebook comments. Good morning to everybody taking the time to tune in. Feel free to share this out. Let me know what you got going on. Um, there are some businesses that are slowly being able to to reopen, I think, tomorrow. And um, yesterday I was talking to a local gym in Friendswood. Have you ever heard of the Sanctuary Gym? They're out in Friendswood. I've seen it, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Do you think that it is time that we open the gyms? I mean, yeah. Yes and no, because, (laughs) you know, I I think that it would be, you know, I mean, uh, I used to work out at a private gym. So it was like me and one other guy that's in a trainer that's working out. So like that, I could, I don't see why that ever closed personally. Mm -hmm. Um, But like a big gym, like a lifetime fitness or 24 hour, you know, I, I think it would be good. But I also see, you know, I'm thinking if somebody, you know, was working out on a machine before Mm -hmm. me. And then it, you know, it wasn't wiped down. Like it puts a lot on people. So I, I don't know. I mean, gyms. Uh, I'm ready for the gym to open back up. Like, Me too. I've been ready to get back, but I don't, if it did open up, I don't know how soon I would go. That's right. the thing. Like I'm ready for it in my head, but then I'm just like, I want to wait and see what my two Facebook friends who have an opinion on this have to say. <laughs> exactly. That's it. See what they're see what they're doing. So I, I don't know. I mean, gyms. I think I, I'm okay with the gym being closed a little bit. Um, Barber shop totally different story you, yeah opinion. you think so i don't think a barbershop should ever closed right because it's one person with one person wear a mask like mm-hmm. just, i don't know I, I mean that may be a bad opinion but i saw there's a nail salon and they're not allowed to be open either right. right now but they were trying to prep for when they are and there's like a glass thing and it's like okay there's a little hole right here almost like a i'm thinking like a bank teller in a movie you know what i mean yeah stick your hands through <clears throat> and that's then you can get, get it done. That's yeah, with the nails, and that seems so, like a safe option. I wonder if that's the new normal. Like, if that's what it's going to be from now on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my, my wife this morning, whenever uh, all the kids ran into the room, she was like, "I hope this isn't the new normal," <laughs> because like the kids aren't going to school and it's it's different. And she's and I was like, "I think it is. I think it is." Like, I don't know. At just for like, the next few months. Right? Yeah, one kid trying to wake the other one up. Whoever wakes up first and is like, "Let them sleep," but they don't listen. Nah. That's how that's how our family is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just they're the alarm. Yeah, man. So if, if you're listening on on Facebook, we want to we want to hear from you. Do you think the salons, the barber shops, the nail spas, the with the the opportunity where you're like one on one, do you think those should be open? What's what's your thought on that? Go ahead and weigh in. I want to hear from you. Uh, this is KHEA Radio dot com ninety nine point five FM. It's Kickstart. My name's Gardy. I got my good friend Joshua Rudolph here in studio talking about a. Some things, and then we're going to kick it to uh, Pastor Catherine Rudolph. She is in the, in the in the front of the church, and she's going to be giving us an update on what's happening from the from the food drive out front. So, yeah, let let me know. I had an idea last night. I want to hear from people who have barbershops, who have salons, and I want to see because I've seen it from both sides, saying like I'm I'm fine being closed for the safety of whatever. And then some people are like, well, let me let me open, you know, and just get their their thoughts. They're the experts, and they know how much school and the measures that they take to to clean and, and make sure things are safe. But. Yeah. I mean, I've heard some, you know, under the radar guys that are still cutting hair out of the house, mm-hmm. um, which I'm like, you know, good for them. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I saw somebody ask on the City of Leak City's Facebook page, there was a live video that they did, and it was like, hey, am I still allowed to have somebody come over to my house and cut my hair? And they responded back and said, yeah, sure, you can. Why not? And this was from the the city of Leak City government is the name of. They said yes, or they, the city of yeah that Facebook page said I'll bet yes. People went nuts, huh? The answer is yes. After that, someone was like, "Why is the city telling people that they can have somebody oh, come?" Yeah. And I was like, "I don't know. <laughs> this is th- that's why I don't run an official government page." That's it. Yeah. No, I don't want to. I don't want to be in that heat. No thanks. Man. So, I feel like one on one. Yeah, there's precautions you can take. Maybe somebody wears a mask. You don't get the haircut above your ears. <laughs> right. Something. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that there's, like, I was, I was disappointed that my guy closed. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, he owns his own shop, so I mean, he's out six weeks, no, no income. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. What do people even do? I saw an article that said 24 Hour Fitness was considering filing for bankruptcy. I mean, they've been taking my money for the last 20 <laughs> years, so I don't know. I mean, they got plenty I saw, there. I don't. Get I saw that. somebody said, I was like, yeah. Did they not save? I don't know the expenses they go know. into maintaining and the the staff. I feel like the turnover is. I don't know. It just seems like it's a lot that I goes just, on there. I saw an industry that was, they own like 63 different properties and they were, they were talking about their, I was looking at some investing stuff and they were talking about their monthly output was like $383 million for that's wow. That's for salaries and different things. And so, I mean, for them to keep it up and I think they dropped it to like under a hundred million mm-hmm. while this was going on. So, you know, 
I, I guess a lot of these guys just they don't have that kind of capital sitting around. I yeah. Know. What do you think about like being a okay a Christian perspective of being le- being like not scared or maybe being scared or just like is that wrong? Like being a Christian, like hey, I should be strong in this and not worried, right? Yeah. I mean, I think I think there's you know I think that it's okay to be concerned. It's okay to be smart. You know. Uh, I got no problem walking around and putting a mask on just to, um, to you know, it, it's the same thing. I'm not going to, I'm just not going to be stupid in doing some stuff, you know. So uh, if, you know, if a building's on fire, I'm not going to walk in the building. I'm going to be concerned and stay away. Mm-hmm. I think the same thing is true with this. You know, we just, <clears throat> we keep, we keep a vigilant eye on it and, and just don't do anything that's crazy. So uh, by faith, we believe we're not going to get sick. Uh, and by faith, if we get sick, we believe we're going to get healed. You know, I think that th- those are kind of the measures. Uh, but I'm not going to do anything to put myself at risk. Yeah. So I'll do, you know, if that means I socially distance, if that means I wear a mask, if that means I, you know, bring hand sanitizer, whatever the, the case is, I think that's uh, what's what's necessary to do. Yeah. You know, there's there's a, a thought Pastor Allen teaches when it comes to healing how healing can come in different ways. And this is all from, from the Bible. It's like, it can come, you know, immediately like a miracle. Right. It can come gradually. And then sometimes healing comes in the form of, of getting your eternal reward, you sure. know, going to heaven. And I've, I've uh, had that conversation with people. They're like, well, why didn't this person get healed? You know, they did, right. you know, they, they did get their healing. So that's one way of looking at it. That's kind of like, wow, that's to me, that's like, oh, that's deep revelation. Right. It is. They got their healing. Sure. Yeah. But um, here in uh, in Galveston County, we have a, a good friend, you know, Dr. Robin Armstrong. He's been working with uh, one of the the nursing homes that got really hit hard by by coronavirus. That was insane. The fact that it happened here in, in Texas right. City. Yeah, just right down the street. Yeah, and um, you know him, right? Right, Dr. Robin. He's a he's a great guy. I think I saw him like um, for Christmas Eve, like maybe the Christmas Eve service or something. Yeah. But he's a great he's a great guy. Great guy. Yeah, I think he went to the Bible school, but he was he was before you because you right. went to the Bible school here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he was. Yeah, he was already he was already a doctor. I think when I got here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, but yeah, no, I mean he's a good dude and and really has done some great things. I think most of the people that he was treating, um, I think maybe all but one, were were totally they beat it. You know, they they beat the disease and and got through. So yeah, um, I think that's you know, man, my hat off to him. That's that's a testament to to him being a great doctor and you know, doing the right thing. So, yeah, I know he's really busy, but I'd love to get him on KHEA. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like uh, if you have nothing else going on, just go ahead and swing, <laughs> swing on by. in. Yeah. That's That's Zoom cool. in and, and we'll have some fun. Sure. But he's uh yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. And there's a lot of articles that I've seen like Ro- Rolling Stone magazine put out something and like all these local publications all the way to big national That's ones tough. covering yeah. Texas City, Texas and, and Dr. Dr. Robin Armstrong. A graduate from Lamarck High School. That's it. Member yep. of a bundle of life. It's yeah. pretty cool. Speaking speaking of Lamarck, I saw Mayor Hawking is he announced from his Facebook page he's the mayor of Lamarck and has been for ten years. Ten years of being the mayor. Yeah. That's a long time. It's a long time. He he made an announcement and said he was not going to be seeking re election next year. So, you know, that's a shout out to Mayor Hawking and everything he's done. Who he's has, done a great job. Yeah. Really did a great job in the city of Lamarck. When was the do you remember whenever you met him? Uh yeah. I mean it's been uh probably 17 or 18 years ago you know i met him through the church uh years and years ago and then i worked with him uh because he you know he worked some around and uh and so yeah i mean i've I've known mayor hawking for a long time yeah and then now he's a mayor it's pretty cool Mm -hmm. doing great things so i mean does that mean are you gonna move to lamarck and and throw in your hat what's what's the deal i was talking to my wife about it last night you know and i'm taking this time to announce that uh, my wife said I can't run for Mayor Lamarck. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, we don't live. I said I did grow up in Lamarck. That's it. I graduated high school in Lamarck. You know, and um, if it, if there was ever anybody that should, <laughs> this is this could be your calling in life. <laughs> <laughs> I I was telling Jennifer, I was like, yeah, think about the the family portrait pictures that we could take. I thought I could talk her. Into, I was just trying to see what what she would say. I was like, she wasn't I'm, having it. I was like, there could be like a a, a fence, you know, the white fence, like on a farm and. And, you know, my son's wearing loafers and shorts and a blazer with gold buttons. So think about what you get to wear. Like, we'll go to Brooks Brothers. That's it. Pick something on, on the mag- on the mannequin for you. It'll be a great time. But oh, she was yeah, like. I bet she was loving that. Oh, no. She was like, no. <laughs> She's like, we can just take those pictures anyway. Never. We yeah. don't need that. <laughs> hey, so right now it's 1030. This is KHEARadio.com. 99.5 FM is Kickstarter. I'm going to take a break 
on the FM, and we are going to uh, take some time to get Pastor Catherine Rudolph uh, dialed in and, and bring her in on this on this, uh, on this this conference and show, and here we go. All right, Facebook, we're still hanging out with you guys, so uh, we're going to get Pastor Catherine on the stream so we can get some uh, updates and some information about everything that's going on, not too far from us, but we'll be able to see it on the camera and everything. So Zoom is cool. Have you had opportunities to use it for just whatever? I have, yeah. I've, I've used it uh, for some meetings in the past. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a great setup. Did you see Facebook is going to be doing some things with to compete own? with it? Nah, I'm not surprised. I mean, it makes sense. And I think you're going to be even able to implement it with Instagram. That's cool. Which is which yeah. is neat, too. So it was like Facebook mess. So you can do it in messages. You can do it like on the platform in Instagram. Wow. It's it's a really good move, in my opinion. Yeah, I feel like that pulls it out of like the business world into like kind of more mainstream. Because mm-hmm. you know, Zoom is more of a, a businessy kind of deal. Yeah, but that's for my son. He's taking his martial arts classes through Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. So he uh, he actually moved up to his next belt. He's an orange belt, so it's white, yellow, orange. He moved up to a, an orange belt. And that was through Zoom. They even did like the graduation ceremony. They, That's yeah, cool. they did a drive through. So I had to go pick up this package. He even broke a board, which it was <laughs> it was awesome because he had never done that before. So yeah. they're like, okay, you can either do this this uh, sidekick, a hammer fist, or you can do a um, I can't remember what the other it was like a palm hill strike. Yeah, a palm hill strike. And he was like, I don't know, what I've never done this. I'm gonna do. It. But it was like a like well, we filmed it, but it was he was like shocked himself, and it was a really proud moment. That's I was like, cool. You did it, yeah. <laughs> So it's gonna uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how those those places open back up too. What are they gonna do for for sports? Are they just gonna line the stadium with iPads and have everybody zoom in and, <laughs> and, and watch the game so that you can have fans cheering? Sponsored by Facebook, <laughs> right? yeah, probably so. Oh my gosh! Because I know that's that's one of the options. People were talking about college football, and they have the uh, Fauci. Is that his mm-hmm. name? And he was like, well. You know, yeah, they could do a college football, just nobody's in attendance. Yeah, right. It's like, what Good are you luck. talking about? Yeah. Tell that uh, Texas A&M with 100,000 seats and nobody's going to be there? Yeah. That's going to be insane. Like these these college football teams that have sellout streaks and right. people standing, and it's like it would be technically broken, like an asterisk by it. I don't it's know. It's crazy. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know what it's going to look like. <laughs> but I don't see people congregating with 100,000 other people anytime soon. I don't know. Yeah. I hope so, but we'll see. We'll see what happens, but um it's it's going to be it's definitely interesting times. You got to kind of navigate it delic- delicately because something like this has never happened right. during our lifetime. Hopefully never happen again, but <clears throat> you don't you never know. Who knows? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, I'm, I'm who's your team? Uh football? Have, yeah, who's your you have teams, huh? I do. Yeah. Uh what, college? NFL? College? College first. I'm a, I'm a well, I'm a Boise State guy, mm-hmm. but then I'm an Aggie. I like I like Texas A&M. I went one time and it wrecked me. Yeah, I was like, man, this is so cool, too cool. What about NFL? Because it's going to be an interesting season. Yeah, so I'm a Tom Brady fan, so I follow Brady. So <laughs> I was a Patriots guy, and now I'm gonna I'm following the Bucks, but I also like the Cowboys. What if they're bad? What if <sighs> what, you no think the Bucks way. are going to be bad? There's no way they're going to be bad. Nah. They, they don't have Belichick. Yeah, but they got Brady and they got Mike Evans, and they're going to be. I think they're going to be solid. They're going to be good. Yeah, Mike Evans from Galveston. From Galveston, Galveston ball. Yeah, and Texas A&M. Yeah, he's the dude's a stud. Man. I remember my dad saying he was a great basketball player. He was like, I think he was a better basketball player than he was football player. But I, pff, I think I'm, he only played football his senior year, and then got <laughs> got a scholarship offer and ended up going to the NFL. Yeah, he played one year. That's yeah, nuts. he's a big dude, and he's he's doing great. Yeah, from yeah, from really Galveston, cool. and uh, I saw an article I think sometime last year where he you know the, coming back and doing some stuff and donating money yeah, and all that. That's cool. It is going into the community. Mm-hmm. For him. Someone had told me, and it was an NFL player that we had in before, that I think it was Galveston has the most NFL, like maybe in the county or something, or like yeah. in the, I don't know what it was, but it was saying like Ball High has some of the most uh, and uh, people that have made it to the really? NFL. Yeah. I need to research it again. I, I'm pretty sure. sure that's what it was. But it was one of, uh, yeah, one of the NFL players that we've had in, which is really cool. I don't know, just getting to be able to talk to these guys and find out hey. their journey and stuff. And Yeah, because nobody's looks the same. Mm-mm. You know, I mean, some guys like for Brady to last, you know, whatever, 20 years in the league. And then, you know, some guys last 
two, three. You know, I mean, it just shows you how hard. It yeah, is. that's like the normal. Right. I think the average for a running back is five, five years, mm-hmm. which is is insane. Yeah, but they that's why they try and get their money. Got to get that money now. Okay, so I think we have Catherine, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is is patch her in audio wise. I'm going to make sure she's there, and then we're going to get her on the FM. Catherine, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Okay. Do cool. To, do I need to flip my phone sideways? Yes, you do. And we're going to get that camera shot set, and then we're going to kick it back onto the the FM. But uh, okay. that looks that looks good. Hang on, hang <clears> on, <throat> hang on. Yeah, that works. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, okay. I'm I'm gonna mute you, and then I'll I'm gonna kick it on the FM, and we'll bring you back in. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So we're gonna throw it back on the FM. Here we go. <clears throat> when this good morning. This is KHEA Radio, ninety nine point five FM. It's ten thirty six. My name is Guardy. This is Kickstart. I got my friend Joshua Rudolph here in studio. What's up, Josh? What's up? What's up? So we, we're gonna um, kick it to Pastor Catherine Rudolph, who is currently in the front of Abundant Life Christian Center, and she's gonna let us know what's going on. Hey, good morning, Catherine. How you doing today? Good morning. I'm doing good. How about you guys? I'm doing good. We are in studio. Where are you at? Nice. I'm up at the front of the church where we have the food bank going on. So I just stepped inside just a minute ago. How's it going? How's it going out there? It's going really good. We got a lot of people, a lot of a lot of cars that have already come through, and a lot of them that are still queued up waiting. Mm-hmm. And um, how how often is this going to be happening? And what kind of things are they handing out today? Yeah, we're doing it uh, the next four Thursdays. So today, but then every Thursday during the month of May, we're going to be doing this at ten o'clock here at the church. And uh, today, the food items that they have, they've got a great truck, and it varies, you know, week to week. It's always different. But they've got cereal and oatmeal. They've got uh, different bread products. I saw a huge cake, like a, a decorated cake. It looks like a big hat that they, they had. So it's, uh, I mean, cakes and breads and cereals. And then they today they have um, every car gets ham, uh, a pork patty, like a hamburger patty, but it's pork and a chicken, a frozen chicken, and then a box of frozen fish sticks that every car is getting plus all the dry goods that are there. And uh, and then there's that company called the Birthday Joy that's here. So if there are kids that have a birthday between now and the end of June, then they've got a birthday in a bag that they're also giving them. That's awesome. How, how has the line been? Has it been pretty steady out there? Is a lot of people take it, taking uh, the opportunity to come out? Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of people. They've been here since 745 or so this morning. Uh, the, that's when everybody started lining up. But right now it's uh, through our main lot, there's a line, and all the way wrapped around the block still. So they're just, you know, steadily coming in. It's people that need for different reasons, you know. Mm-hmm. And what, what about volunteer wise? Getting help. Volunteers that volunteers. are out there. Yeah, we've got uh, the National Guard has a team of people that are here today. I think there's about 12 or 15 of them that are out here helping to direct traffic, load food into cars, put these boxes together, and then we've got about 20 people between the church and the school. Uh, that are here also today that are just helping, smiling through a mask, you know, waving to people as they come through, putting groceries in their cars. Uh, it's, it's a real, it's very inspiring to see a group of people like this get together, especially in light of everything that's been going on, to just be able to help and to reach people that have a need in the moment. Mm-hmm. And the people, they don't have to get out of their car at all. They just kind of just ride along, right? Right. Yeah. It's completely contactless. So everybody can see my, my mask and gloves. I just took them off so we could talk here for a sec, but everybody is uh, covered like that. And they just take their information so that we know how many uh, items that we're going to be putting in each car and they load it into their trunk. So it's a drive through complete thing. I can walk out so we can look at it. If you want to do that. Sure. Yeah. Let's go. Josh, you had the opportunity. I mean, you were helping last, last week and, and there's a lot going on. Yeah. Is there anything you experienced out there or was it, what was it like? No, I mean, it was pretty cool. I think, you know, I mean, what, what we really saw is how, you know, how appreciative people were, man. They were really just thankful that, you know, they had the opportunity to, to pull up and, and get groceries, get food, you know, and, and you don't ever know somebody's situation. So, uh, this could be the only food they get all week. It could be, you know, whatever. So yeah, people were excited. Can I see it behind me there? Yeah. So if you're, if you're watching on, on Facebook, uh, there's a view of what's going on right now outside of Abundant Life. So you can see the boxing of everything that's going up. If you're listening on 99.5 FM or from the KGA radio app or our website, um, there's a, a really cool 
an interesting scene. You can see the cars. There's the National Guard, um, the awesome, beautiful palm trees. That's one of the things I love about about a bundle life in the front is the palm trees. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of volunteers out there, and they're still boxing up and making it making it happen. So right now, let's see. It's 10:40. This is KHEA Radio. Dot com 99.5 FM. And I think we're losing we're losing Catherine a bit just because she might have been connected to the Wi-Fi and she was uh, getting and it was disconnecting. But um, there's there's a lot that's going on. And I know for the next couple of Thursdays, we're going to be able to have this partnership and let the, the food bank come and use our, our side and, and some of our volunteers kind of work together as well. So um, so Catherine, this is going to be going on. So what time today? Uh, this goes on until 12 o'clock today, or until the food runs out. So what time is it right now? I don't right. even know what time it is. It's 1041. <laughs> 1041, yeah. So it'll go on until, it's scheduled until 12 o'clock or until the supplies are all gone. Okay, if somebody wants to volunteer in the future, how do they do that? Who do they get a hold of? And I guess, is there like an age requirement or do they have to bring a mask or, or what is, what's going on with that? Yeah, so if you have a mask, uh, go ahead and bring uh, your mask. If you have gloves, you can bring those with you just because we want to be responsible and sensitive to anybody, uh, you know, the concerns and things that are out there. And you can be uh, a teenager. You have to be at least 16 to be able to help us out here. And you can message us through the Abundant Life page so that we can get you connected. Or you could call the church office. Uh, you go to our website. Uh, there's a link there where you can email just for contact info so that we can get you connected. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty simple thing to do. I mean, you just gotta be ready to show up and work. So volunteers show up at eight so that we can get uh, boxes loaded and everything ready to go whenever the truck gets here. And then somewhere between 9.30 and 10, we start the distribution to the people who are lined up. Okay, and then can you let me know what's taking place on Sunday? I think there's a couple of different ways to participate in Abundant Life Service. Can you let me know what's going on uh, this Sunday? Yeah, so from what we've heard, you can, am I losing you? There we go. You can uh, hold services again on Sunday. And so we're going to be doing that here at Abundant Life. You can either watch online, so ALCC.org or the Facebook stream right here. You can catch the service uh, where you can watch it from your home or your job or whatever, wherever you would be away from campus. You can also pull up on the property and park outside in the parking lot. And you could listen to 99.5. You catch the service or watch the stream on Facebook, um, but we'll also have the doors to the church open. So if there are people who want to come into the sanctuary to worship, then we're following, you know, all the CDC guidelines. So like a family can sit together, but then there's six feet between the family units and then like a row or two between each one so that everybody is safe and practicing social distancing, but you could be in the sanctuary as well. So three chances, either online in the parking lot or actually in the auditorium. All right. That's awesome. Thank you for joining us today, Catherine. Yeah, it was great to be here. All right. So right now it's uh, 1043. This is KHEA Radio 99.5 FM. Um, one thing that, that she was mentioning, so if you want to be a part of the service, you can be. If you feel comfortable wearing a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't don't wear one. You know, it's it's kind of, it's up to you. But uh, we are going to be practicing in, uh, you know, with the CDC guidelines, social distancing and making sure that we aren't, uh, being negligent of, of things that are going on, but uh, that's going to be on Sunday. But right now, till 12 o'clock, the Galveston County Food Bank is here on site at Abundant Life where they are distributing food and items, and there's volunteers. So I think if you even want to come and volunteer right now, you're still able to. Um, but we got a couple minutes left, and I'm here talking to, to Pastor Josh, just finding out what life in quarantine looks like. And um, it's it's different for sure. But one thing I noticed is we have these these chocolates, and I'm going to show these to the camera and uh, let people know, John, what is it that, that I'm holding? So those are uh, those are uh, chocolates for actually for Christmas from Tillman Fertitta's group and the, the Houston Rockets uh, that they sent to us. These are still good, right? I, think I mean, so. chocolates stay yes. good for forever, yeah, right? Absolutely. I may bust, bust these bad boys open <laughs> today. Merry Christmas in April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, a, you know, the Landry's uh, Golden Nugget and the Houston Rockets. Quarantine Christmas. Here we go. It, it is quarantine. I'm going to take a picture of this, and I'm going to have to tag Mr. Fertitta um, and tell him thank you personally. That's it. <laughs> personally. <Absolutely. laughs> we don't have any more basketball, but we've got chocolates. You want one? I do. 
Yeah. Is that like dark chocolate and milk chocolate? I think so. I can't. What did you, you go for? The milk chocolate? Yep. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. So mine says Chart House, and I'm mine, guessing that's one of his restaurants. Mine says Catch. Remember whenever we played on air one time Bamboozled? Mm-hmm. Bean Boozled. Bean Boozled. I do. That game was, I, I was doing so good <laughs> in the beginning, and then like towards the end I got like dirty socks. It catches you. Had you ever played that one before? I never had. That was my first time. Have you played it since? I have it. I have it. I have it. <laughs> Someone gave it. My mom gave it to me like for Christmas or something. I was like, Mom, I'm never playing this game Bean again. Boozled part two. Thank Let's you. go. And my kids would be so mad. Like if I, they're the only people I could trick into playing that game right. at this point, I think. They would be, they would hate me. Oh man, yeah, no. <laughs> it'd be terrible. Uh, they'd never trust me again. Yeah, I was like, why would you do that? <sighs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was fun for what it was. I think it's, a, it's a good time with people. But yeah, no, I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah, speaking of being a parent, I mean, you have kids, and you mentioned that earlier. Right. How has it been for them? Have they noticed anything different? Are they loving it? Are they enjoying it? Like, where's school? What's going on there? Uh, so my daughter, you know, she was in school, so she's, she's missing school for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. She did a Zoom call with her teacher yesterday, which was cool. So she got to to talk to her for a while. Um, and then, like, my mom will do Zoom calls. Her other grandma will do Zoom calls. So they have different things. So uh, we have that going on. Uh, the boys, they don't care. They don't know any different. You know, they're like, because <laughs> they, we don't go anywhere. You know, I mean, outside of the park. We yeah. used to walk down to the park, but we hadn't been. So, uh, but, I mean, you know, they'll still play around the house, ride their bikes, swim, do their stuff. So. Yeah, and no, I hadn't been too crazy. Yeah, I think my daughter likes it more. Right. You know, she's like, hey, dad's around more, just trying to help, and she's enjoying it. And, like, if I go somewhere, it's more of a big deal than, right. it, than, it, than it used to be because it was, uh, you know, I've been there, you know, helping and stuff. And so yesterday, I mean, she just started crying, and that's the worst. Oh, that's, the worst. that's the worst. But I had said bye, and she's like, she didn't hear. But then, you know, my wife brought her out to the front to the car and was like, no, daddy said bye. And I was like, hey, bye. And yeah. sort of, like, honking the horn barely, and she – you can see she had these tears in her eyes, and I was like, oh, man, it's just, it's tough, but. I don't know what's worse, saying goodbye and having them cry or trying to sneak out. <laughs> and then, like, They find out later. That's it. I know. My kids are like that, where they'll cry, but then, like, 30 seconds after, like, if Kat leaves, 30 seconds after she leaves, they're super cool. Like, yeah. nothing happened. I was like, what is this? Yeah. It's, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, it's but. how th- kids are. And it almost messes with you more. It's like, oh, they're crying, and then, like, even, they're over it. Mm-hmm. You know, 30 minutes later, thinking about it, like, man, I feel so bad. But they, they get over it. Easy. Yep. But yeah, my kids have been cool. Um, nothing's nothing's changed much for us, you know, outside of we've been home a little bit more. What about the movies? You're a fan of watching movies, right? Love movies, yeah. Um, you know, obviously you can't go, so we hadn't been doing that, but we've been we've been streaming everything. Like I've watched Trolls World Tour at least fifty times. Like it's just on repeat. Yeah. So I don't even Did know. you like it? Um, <laughs> Did you like the first one? I loved the first one, yeah, because I watched it's it good. a thousand times. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't like it the first time I saw it, but like by time forty, it's growing on me. So now we're listening to the, the soundtrack and what's this? I can't figure out what the song is. Like, what's the hit song? Because from the first the first movie, there was like the obvious, like okay, right. these are like the hit songs. But the second one, I saw it one time, actually two times. But I don't know if there is one. There is. Like, I think they're probably pushing one, but it's not. There's nothing like in the first one. They had nah. a couple songs that were really. Good, but I mean, this is this is a different feel because it's the hard rock, I guess. Yeah. So I tried to play the original versions of those songs for like the kids, Barracuda and oh, yeah. Rocky Like a Hurricane, and they're like, "No, these aren't the same. We don't want these." And I was like, "Yeah, but these are the better versions." And yeah. They don't care. <laughs> they, they don't. They're not into it. <laughs> what was the last movie you saw in a movie theater before it was shut down? Do you uh, remember? Yeah, we went and saw Bad Boys. Was it good? <laughs> uh, it actually was. It was pretty solid. Yeah. Is that Bad Boys Three? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's awesome. So that's funny. Yeah, it, well, it was it was the only movie that the we time? hadn't already seen, and okay. so we were like, we just had to get out of the house. Yeah. So yeah, no, I think, <laughs> I think that's the last one we saw. The last movie I saw was the Sonic movie. Okay. Did you see it? Yeah, we watched it at the house. It's pretty solid. Okay, I saw it by myself in the movie theater <laughs> with a big thing of popcorn, and this is how that happened. Because, uh, you know, if I come up here and I'm working, doing radio stuff, filming, you know, whatever it is, just sitting sitting here, whatever, and. My son gets out of school. It always works this way. Like, I get done, and it's, like, 2 o'clock, 1.50, and I got to, or whatever, and I got to pick up my son at, like, 3. And I can drive home, which will take me 20 minutes. Right. 22 minutes. It depends. 20 minutes to get back. And so I'll call my wife and be like, hey, are you getting, you know, and she's like, no, just stay up there. I'm like, okay, I got an hour and a half. And so I was sitting up here, and I was like, I'm going to go to Toxic City Comics. That's when they were open. Yeah. And, um, and then I'm like, I'm going to get some popcorn. And then I'm looking at the movie times. 
might as well. I got a, I got a little time. <laughs> so I watched Sonic. And my wife's like, what are you doing? She's texting me like, hey, everything okay? She's like, he has to sit up there. He's upset. I'm like, life's great. It's awesome. She kind of got mad, though. Ah, uh, because did she want to see it? Or well, not she because just, she wanted to see you it. You went without her. I went without She's like, so you went to the movies without me? I was like, oh, man. It was either sit up here and stare at the computer screen, act like I'm working, <laughs> or- Or, or uh, Sonic. Go get- Yeah, go go see Sonic. <laughs> Need to get you some hobbies. I guess so. Yeah, but um, it was an interesting movie. Jim Carrey saved the movie, in my opinion. Yeah. I think it was better than- <clears throat> Remember the Sonic, what the character looked like before they changed it, right? It was bad. Uh, it was bad. So uh, I think it was good for that that it, like they got pressured into adjusting the whole movie. That usually doesn't happen. Nah, but it sure does now. I know the Ninja Turtle, like the the most recent ones that came out. Mm -hmm. Whenever they first showed the Ninja Turtles, everyone was like, "Man, they look kind of funny." Yeah, they should have changed them. I think to look more like the. Like, like the original. Original, yeah. Like the movies, cartoons, and all that stuff. Yeah, those were good movies, though. I liked them. Yeah. I'm a Ninja Turtle guy, though, so I was I was cool. Uh, question. Have you seen the Michael Jordan documentary, or the Bulls documentary? Mm -hmm. So I saw episode it? one, two, and three. And episode three, I was, like, falling asleep because I can't watch him in front of my and my kids. Well, it even says, like, some of the content, maybe, right. whatever. And I'm just like, okay, I guess I can't watch this in front of my kids. So uh, they stay up in quarantine. So I was, like, watching it on my phone, like, struggling to stay stay awake but I, I finished episode three i need to watch episode four it's good, so good. i like so it. good yeah. you remember Love all those it. teams right mm -hmm. yeah i was a bulls fan back then um because you know in idaho we didn't have teams you know the mm -hmm. closest was the utah <laughs> jazz um and so and i was a, i like dennis Rodman. Were, you the, were you a jazz fan i i was just out of necessity because everybody was jazz fans around me i so, hate the jazz i know <laughs> i hate the jazz I know. so i was yeah just out of, of geography i was a jazz fan uh but i was a bulls guy and i really liked dennis rodman back then I like Dennis Rodman now. I love Dennis Rodman. Man, in fifth grade, I had a pair of his shoes. It was the ones that laced on the side and yep. had air on the side, and it was like a lace. <laughs> Man, yeah, Dennis Rodman, he's uh, ahead of his time, and he was a great. He was he the way he hustled and played. That's what, the way I wanted to be. Right. Like I'm not the scorer. I'm not the Michael Jordan, but I'm gonna like be annoying, and I'm willing to fight. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna fight it. somebody. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I thought I thought just kind of seeing this documentary, I think showed. You know, I mean, Michael Jordan said that he was the smartest player, one of the smartest players they ever played with. Like, that's that's a pretty big testament mm -hmm. to say about somebody that, you know, may not get that kind of credit. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And, and his story and Dennis Rod, I mean, and, uh, and Scottie Pippen's story, how they weren't the the Michael Jordan coming out of their right their school. It's they like, went to nothing schools. Yeah. yeah. But they still managed, you know, with, with Grossberg and genetics and everything else and, sure. and hard work, for sure, they managed becoming, like, Hall of Famers, right. champions, and, and the, some of the most important players. You know, on the squad. Absolutely. It's yeah, really no, cool how that happens. Yeah, they were awesome. It's cool. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to the next. Uh, I need to finish that episode. I guess that's episode four. And then is it 10 part? 10 parts, yep. Two a week. Yeah, so this next one's Phil Jackson, which is cool. You get to see some stuff about him, which is it's pretty neat. Yeah, because he was a player back in the day. Right. Played for the Knicks is all I, all I really remember, but I don't know much about him other than that. Yeah, I didn't either. I mean, I knew, you know, he coached some places. and It's pretty cool kind of seeing – just his his mindset and how he coached and what he did. And, yeah, uh, yeah. He's, awesome. he's the Zen, the Zen guy. Big time. Yeah. And he made the triangle offense popular. That's it. And he right. talks about that and like the difference between the, the coaching and what do you think about Jerry Krause? Man, I remember being a kid and those championships. I was rooting for the Bulls. You know, after the Rockets were out, I'm, it's Michael Jordan. He's you know in every McDonald's Gatorade commercial. He was the face of of the NBA. You and, like Mike? You know, I, yeah, I wanted to be like Mike mm -hmm. and. I wanted his shoes. You know, they were $100 at the time, and my mom's like, nope. you're like eight years old. No, I'm not spending $100 on shoes. Now you have, like my son, I remember he, I'd buy him like $100 pairs of shoes, and he's like three. That's it. <laughs> right? It doesn't even matter. That's but it. But that's how much they cost, you right. know? And and maybe I'm reliving my mom telling me no for <laughs> those Jordan shoes. That'll teach you. But I, I never realized why that team broke up. It didn't make sense to me. I was like, why? are You know, they just won their second three-peat. Why are they breaking it up? It. And so I learned so much. And of course, I was like on Google, Jay Kraus, like reading all this, like, man, you know, he had, he's passed away now and, and all that stuff. And it, it kind of feels bad watching it about he's not even here to defend himself. Right. A part of me, when I watched that episode, I was like, and then I Google and it's like, man, he's not here anymore. Yeah. He's not even here to defend himself. Yeah, yeah, or like, yeah. I that's wonder it. what his family thinks. I, I That's what kind of crossed my mind. But if it's true, it's true. You know, I mean, that's it. Accounts. Yeah. You can't. I, I mean, you got to give it to him that he put them together. But then he was also kind of the instrument of their destruction. On purpose. Like, right. he was like, because he, he thought I could do it again. Yeah. And do you remember the teams after that? Because he, yeah. he drafted 
and there was some potential. Not bad, but I mean, it just it never had a chance. Yeah, I know he drafted. You know, uh, Jalen Rose, who's a, a big podcaster, ESPN right. guy. You know, came out of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he Jalen Rose. He had Ron Artest, who's a beast defensive player of right. the year multiple times. He had um, um, what's his name, Jay Williams. He went to Duke. He, his name was Jason Williams. Then when he right. got to the NBA, there was like four other Jason Williams. And so he was like, I'm going to change my name to Jay. So there was like a squad of five. And then he, all these guys he broke up, he traded, and he got for draft picks. And he, he drafted these younger guys. And um, all of the those guys didn't really pan out. Right. And all the guys he traded away became all-stars. Go figure. And, um, yeah, it's just interesting. I mean, always chasing it, right, I guess? You're always chasing that, that magic. Go and, big. I mean, you have to. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I thought that's kind of where the Rockets were. They, you know, they, were, they, they, in this year, I think they were trying hard to, to do something, and so I don't know, I don't know if this time off is going to be good or bad. I think it's going to be terrible. Yeah, a lot of those. I mean, it depends on where. So these Houston guys, and speaking of of the Rockets, I'm going to have, <laughs> I'm going to have myself another. <laughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Fertitta. That's it. <laughs> oh, there's a big one. I realized that was a big old piece of chocolate. Um, these these chocolates uh, from Tillman Fertitta and the Houston Rockets and his group. Um, I think the teams that are like in New York are going to not be as good because those guys are probably living in apartments, right? And it's expensive unless you know you're like a superstar and you got a a house where you can. But I think the guys that live down here, like the Rockets, they probably live in I don't know Sugarland, Friendswood, wherever mm-hmm. wherever they live, and they probably have like a court and some weight rooms and stuff. Right, but no but the the bigger cities where the real estate's more expensive, Makes it hard. that's going to play a factor. I think so. But I think May first, they're opening up the facilities, is what the NBA said, okay. where the teams sense. can can practice and do stuff. I saw. I, I'm pretty sure I saw on TV. Uh, Steph Curry's wife was doing something on the news that I saw. Of course she was. Yeah, <laughs> and but she said they don't have a hoop at the house. Like they had to go buy one and have it shipped in and like have somebody install it because they didn't have a hoop at their house. Which is, I mean, I guess why would you? You know, I mean, if you're, you just go to the gym because mm-hmm. there's gyms never closed for one of those guys, but. I thought that was kind of funny that, like, one of the best players in the NBA has to go buy it a is. Off, off of Amazon to I want <laughs> one. put in his house. But I don't have anywhere to put it. I was telling my wife, I said, if we concreted the back. Put that backyard? Let's yeah. go. But then I was trying to see which angle to put it. I was like, it goes in the neighbor's yard. They got a big dog. Put it, put it in up. the other neighbor's yard. They got an even bigger dog. And then in the back, we have a retention pond or it hits the windows. And I was like, I guess the safest is our windows. Right. <laughs> At least it's our own. But I think you should just. I don't know. Concrete the whole backyard, put two hoops up. We got a full court, put some lights out, net it. We're in business. My friend uh, Jonathan Salas, at his his parents' house, they have like a big concrete thing with like an official hoop. It's legit. Real and nice. I think they got lights out there because his parents are pastors. And so they would have like a lot of yeah. youth stuff there. It's not too far from the church. But yeah, I've, I've played out there before. But man, that's one thing that I want. Like in my next house, if we ever move, right. I want to have a yard. Where there's able to be concrete in like a goal. Yeah, that'd be cool. And of course, like a full gym. Right. And a swimming pool, hot tub. As long as I'm wishing, right? I mean, that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, why not? That's what are some it. things that you would want at your house? Like dream, dream, dream life, next house. Man, I don't know. I mean, I've, you know, I've got a pretty good setup now, to be honest with you. Uh, some more room. I wish I had. So the lot next to our house didn't sell for years. And we could have got it real cheap when we bought. And I wish we would have. Because that would have been a great place to just have like an extra yard mm-hmm. for my kids to play. But um, so I would like some property like that. I think uh, a golf simulator, uh, which I have. So in, in my garage, so like <laughs> I'm, like a I'm movie, cool without that. The movie theater uh, room, I'm good. Right, okay. I got that uh, swimming pool. Um, no, I mean I think you know a basketball court would be cool to have. Um, I think because you don't have the space for that. I don't have the space now. Nah. Um, I think that would be cool, and I'd I put like an extra garage because I ate up my garage with the weight room and the and the simulator. So, yeah. Uh, outside of that, man, I'm I'm pretty good set up right now. We've well, we've been there fifteen, well, no, ten years. So I mean, we've over the last ten years have kind of modified it to to make it what we wanted. So it's been pretty cool. Yeah, the garage would be cool. Somewhere to like work out or pretend like I'm working out. I mean, that's the thing. I've got all this stuff and I just never use it. So. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of sits there. Yeah, I bought a row machine probably about four or five years ago, and I was like, I'm gonna use, and I used it a lot for a bit until I didn't. It's great mm-hmm. when you use it. But That's the trick. You got to use it for it to work. It, I know. It's the worst. 
But uh, that's one way to stay motivated. I feel like just keep buying new equipment. It's like like workout stuff. It's like, oh, I bought new shoes to work out in. It doesn't like, work out. like that. And then- <laughs> <laughs> Not for me anyways. It don't work like that. Yeah. I just have expensive stuff that sits there. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. So right now it's 11 o'clock. Uh, this is KHEA Radio 99.5 FM. Josh, thank you for hanging out today. Yeah, man. It was good. Y'all have a blessed day. Facebook, see you guys later. Be blessed.